replace or commission originally uh, microinverters. So here you see we click on the power dial to begin and we can see that there are uh, two units here in the array that are not responding. Um, in this case there was an issue with a circuit breaker and the units needed to be replaced. So what we do is leave this menu and hit back um, and then hit menu and then we'll enter the developer menu which is found by clicking in the upper left hand corner of the screen. Um, oftentimes you'll be prompted with a password there if you're at the customer site and the password is revolution all lowercase the word revolution. After accessing the developer main menu one hits uh, OOK menu and then info dump and we hit info dump because what we will often find is the case is that the status is showing automated info dump which means that the gateway is currently polling inverters so first we'll turn off the polling and we can see that the units of interest here one is unit three this unit has become non-responsive and in addition um, the final unit to be discovered was actually never found in the array to begin with. So this is an array of, of 30 modules, um, but you can see actually that there are um, indexed, uh, there are 29 that are showing here. So we're also going to discover one at the same time. So now I'll go back to OOK menu, and um, actually one more time what we'll do is we'll look here and we'll find the inverter that we want to replace is the inverter with local ID number 3 indicated here. So we'll come back and go into discovery and now hit delete one. We're going to delete that unit three from the array. We're prompted as to whether or not that is what we really want to do. Scroll down a couple of times using the move down arrow and then hit delete one more time. Okay, so now unit three has been deleted from the array. Um, if you erroneously deleted that unit, you can either go and force bind the same ID if you remember it, or you can hit discover lost and all of the units will reappear in the discovered unit, uh, in the discovered list on the left here, and then they can be rebound after that. Um, but in this case, we're going to proceed and we're going to go ahead and we're going to discover two units um, as long as the number is greater than um, that level, then uh, that's okay. We'll just put two here and start with four. And um, these two units will go out and get discovered. The first unit here that's getting discovered is one DC. You can see that what's happening will go back one level. Um, polling commands are going out and you can see the discovery IAC is coming back. Go back into the discover list and we can see that the two new units have appeared here now. So at this point we'll hit bind all so we're going to bind them. One of them will go into slot 3 when we bind them all. See the 3 appeared there. And the next one will go to the last location, slot 29. Okay. So these are now bound um, and they're associated with a gateway. We'll then go back to the top menu by hitting the lower right position. And from here we can go and we will do a setup function and add and then when we add we'll add we just want to add two units to this array in landscape mode so we're going to add them to the existing array and do save new setup and um, this will save modules to your previous configuration so that's okay or add modules to your existing configuration so that's what we want to do and you can see the two new modules are here now they haven't been pulled yet so they're showing zero watts but when they get bound they're shut down so that's normal it will take at least one polling cycle for them to start up again so now we'll go back to setup and we want to move them into their locations using a range and with a range, we can go here 
and um, the instructions are on that page. We just X those out. And so now we'll do toggle swap. So um, we're going to move this unit 196 up to uh, this location. So first click on the location that you're interested in moving to and then click on the unit that you want to move there and then the swap location. This was the other location. You can see that it had been deleted. So the local ID has been changed from 3 to 255 because that's an open-ended local ID. It's not a sign. And then we'll swap by clicking on this unit. Okay. So now we've got two excess units down here and we'll delete them one at a time. Highlight and delete. Um, and then we will um, actually we can cancel this and then if I'll show you that if we leave swap mode then um, what happens is is that um, let's just do a screen refresh here um, we'll leave swap mode um, and then in this context when you're not in swap mode but in pan zoom mode you can select as many as you want and delete them all at once we don't want to select these these are part of the array so we've just selected the one that we want to delete and we'll delete it. So there's two ways to delete modules. You can delete one at a time while in swap mode or an arbitrary many at the same time while um, not in swap mode. So now back and this array will now be published to the cloud. There's nothing to do for that step. Then we can select parameter and the polling algorithm will now be turned back on due to this. Um, we can hit power now and to show power instead of the local ID and um, we can take a look at the resulting so we select power and there it is and this one we can go check on um, specifically in the polling list and we can check its state so we can go always go back underneath the hood. Instead of waiting, we can see exactly what's happening in any given moment. So we see that unit three is harvesting and has been powered up. And now going through these lists, you can either go forward or go back. So if we go previous page, we can get to the end of the list faster. And this unit has yet to be polled. So um, it's on unit 19 now, and it's going to poll, and uh, we'll be able to take a look when that polls through in a moment here. So we can see that it's polling with a repeater enabled. Unit 19, now it's going to unit 20. Now it's going to go to unit 21. If you don't want to wait, you can always turn off the scheduler by hitting toggle PLC schedule, click list poll, click on um, list poll, and then enter the local ID of the unit, which is here, that you want to poll specifically, and get data from that unit directly. So now we're sending a message out, and we can see that we pulled that unit, and it's powered up, and it's harvesting. Um, the other thing to check for is the um, just the quality of the communication. You can see here this is a this is a ground mount. It's it's about 300 feet away from the home, um, but it's it's communicating and uh, there is a repeater in the network. You can see that unit six is set up as a repeater here and. Um, I'll show you how that is done. First, always resume toggle PLC scheduler to put the automatic polling back on. Um, but the way unit 6 has been assigned to be repeater is up here at the top level. And what we have is um, we can click inside and look at the array. And from the array view, and hit setup and now there's the notion of strings and strings are logical clusterings of inverters that are pulled together 